Hello everyone and welcome to the MakerDAO Scientific Governance and Risk Meeting uh, number 164 uh, taking place on Thursday, October 21st, 1700 UTC. Uh, my name is Long for Wisdom. I'm one of the governance facilitators at MakerDAO and I'm chairing this meeting for you all today. Uh, so we've got our usual, usual little bit of an agenda. Um, we've got, uh, yeah, we've got a governance roundup um, talking about polls, uh, MIPS uh, and recent things on the forum. Um, we're gonna have a little bit of a discussion around delegate compensation, which has been a sort of hot topic recently uh, on the forum and in the, and in the chat. Uh, then we'll sort of open things up for a more open discussion. Um, and I believe Rune may be chiming in later with, with some stuff as well. So yeah, uh, just to briefly go over the rules of the meeting, um, please feel free to ask questions um, or uh, interrupt if you have, have stuff to add. Um, we'll sort of let you know if that becomes a problem. So yeah, with that, let's get started. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna give some general updates on the votes we've had in the last week. Cool, so we had one uh, new poll go up last week, I believe. Uh, we had one poll that passed last week at least, um, which was the Open Market Committee DC IAM DC Link Instant Asset Access Module parameter changes. Um, so this was a set of parameter changes to um, allow more die to be minted in what is starting to look like a sort of bullish market environment. Um, so that passed. Uh, we have six ratification polls ongoing. Um, they end on October 25th, which is next Monday. Um, Pablo will talk a little bit about those in the MIPS section. Uh, and then we have three green light polls uh, that are ongoing, um, finishing on Monday the 1st of November. Um, and they are for the Curio stablecoin, the uh, OFH security tokens refinancing, um, yep, uh, and TM2 drop technology metals markets. Uh, in terms of executives, uh, we didn't have an executive last week. Uh, we will have an executive proposal up for vote tomorrow, which should include um, onboarding uh, wrapped staked ETH, uh, the lighter version, um, at an initial debt ceiling of 5 million. Uh, increasing the GUNI uh, V3.USDC debt ceiling to 50 million, uh, and uh, including those DCIM changes um, that we pulled on this week, uh, which also includes an increase uh, up to 1.5 billion debt ceiling for WBTC A. So, with that, I believe I can pass it to Pablo. Okay. So hello everyone, Pablo here with a new MIPS update. Thank you. So uh, let's start ratification polls for this corona cycle open 10 days ago and are closing on next Monday, the 25th. And we are now going to take a quick look at the state of the votes. So next slide, please. Thank you. So out of the six ratification polls, there are two that are at the moment not passing, Maker Labs and deco fixed rate. The latter has suffered another weighty movement of votes, this time towards abstain, following some regulatory concerns that were raised and discussed on the forum, I think. And it's now under the minimum positive participation of 10,000 MKR. The budget for content production is passing, though not without some strain. Moving on, uh, as for staff in RFC, Arden. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, it's pretty much the same old list I've been sharing for the last couple of weeks, so we won't spend much time here. I'm currently getting in touch with authors to make sure everything's okay before the frozen period kicks in. I know that Travin from Infi is working on uh, some uh, modifications for his proposal set. Next slide. <laughs> so just a reminder that the last day for modifications is next Wednesday and that the formal submission window opens on Monday, November the 1st. Um, acting on a suggestion by David, I made a public proposal tracker sheet which essentially is what I use internally to keep track of stuff, but with the MIP editory stuff removed, uh, it calculates the important dates automatically and does some conditional coloring. 
uh, Peyton should be dropping it on the chat right now. Uh, so feel free to bookmark it if you think you could find it useful. Um, also some uh, minor bugs with the internationalization stuff on the MIPS portal. We're working with it on it with uh, this part at the moment. And that's pretty much all from me right now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pablo. All right, I think there might be a slight delay when I when I switch the slide and you guys could see it, but hopefully not a big delay. Yeah, I think it's fine. All right, also before I start, I noticed that once I already posted the forum at a glance, there were some new uh, posts and uh, polls that were on the forum. So I'll just add that to next week's update and just present what I have for now. All right, welcome to the forum at a glance, a weekly review of what's happened on the forums, this time for the week of October 14th to the 21st. Let's begin with the week's top announcement. So rest in peace to Rocket Chat and make way to the official MakerDAO Discord server that has launched Starting October 31st of 2021, Rocket Chat will be completely shut down and Discord will take over as the community's main platform for our chat. Check out the post also to see how you can receive your free NFT. Okay. Um, how, do we, how do we feel about that? Um, seems a little strange to me, if I'm being honest. What seems strange to you, Nick? Uh, oh, sorry. I, I didn't realize my mic was on. I was talking to someone else. My bad. No problem. <laughs> no, <Carry> okay. <laughs> All right. So next up, following up on ideas presented in their previous real world finance report, Seb Ventures posts an update on the real, real world finance core unit to use strategic value for work prioritization and to no longer focus on the number of MIP6 onboarded. The team also presents new objectives and long-term goals, which is awesome to see. Next up, another update to the governance portal. Bain PM from the Ducks core unit posted an update for the newest version, which includes improved uh, verifiability and testnet migration, uh, details for details tab for spells, improved link resources, and a colorful vote break breakdown progress bar. Moving on to the top three discussions. So delegate compensation continues to be a controversial and critical topic for discussion. Astronaut This posts a thread addressing some issues with the governance process being followed for delegate compensation. Astro believes that the MIP61 process should be followed and pulled on chain along with any successful signal requests. Astro believes that delegates should abstain from polls and votes involving delegate compensation. And finally, the post contains some thoughts for long-term solutions, so check it out. Next up, Sasa believes there should be more utility benefits to the MKR token to help MakerDAO benefit from new and upcoming DeFi developments and increase our dominance in the lending market. Sasa presents an idea for discount stability fees for vault owners who hold MKR. This can help incentivize asset managers to own and store more MKR. So check it out and leave your feedback. Finally, there's been many cases lately where popular vault types reach their temporary depth ceilings, which sometimes stops the issuance of new depth. MakerBurn is concerned that these avoidable pauses in DAI issuance is pushing potential users to other similar services like Aave or Compound. MakerBurn provides some suggestions in the post and seeks community feedback on the topic. Moving on to our active signal requests. In response to the previous signals and discussions, Long for Wisdom proposes a higher compensation for delegates and asks the community whether we should increase the maximum delegate compensation as described in MIP61 to 144,000 DAI for the initial three month delegate compensation trial. Next up, in response to the governance and risk meeting during October 14th, uh, and Bourbon signals a second attempt to raise the debt ceiling for ETH A, ETH B, and WBTCA 
uh, and others along with raising the liquidation penalty for ETH A and ETH B votes. And finally, Subventures has been diligently pushing the idea to set PSM fees to 0%, which is also suggested in the case for clean money post. If their signal were to pass, Sebastian provides many long-term pros and cons and discusses how setting PSM fees to 0% would anchor the perception that one die equals $1. That's it for the presentation. For more information on the forum at a glance, check out the post. It includes more announcements, uh, more discussions. It also includes a three-point summary, evalu evaluations and reports for the week, ongoing initiatives, and help wanted. All right, thank you, awesome. So yeah, moving on, uh, as mentioned earlier, we're gonna sort of hopefully start a discussion about uh, delegates and delegate compensation. Um, so we are a little thin on the ground because uh, some people are in Lisbon, right? So um, I think we're expecting to come out of this discussion with any sort of decisions, I guess. It's more just sort of a chance to, to discuss, right? Um, so I'll come over the floor and invite anyone to sort of uh, chime in if they want. Uh, otherwise, I'll do a kind of introduction. OK, yeah, so I think uh, like my current position is that we're seeing that. So we, we started with an initial group of recognized, of recognized delegates. Um, for, for those that don't know, recognized delegates are delegates that are required to uh, or sort of uh, tracked for their voting and like communication with the community, right? Um, so we started off with a, with a few of these recognized delegates, some of which are here, most of whom you know. Um, we kind of saw in the last few weeks that, you know, those people are sort of not having a great time being delegates um, for various reasons um, and are sort of being given uh, more worthwhile offers to do work elsewhere. Um, and I think also since we started, we failed to really attract um, any sort of significant amount of other recognized delegates, right? Um, so those kind of things combined kind of signal that the kind of trade-off for those people is, is not great um, in terms of kind of risk reward and cost benefit, et cetera. Uh, which I think if we want to um, continue to have recognized delegates, um, we kind of need to address with some form of compensation. Yeah, so I fully agree with this and uh, I'm going to also talk about that a bit later. And basically, the, th the most important way to think of this is that the delegates is really in terms of how we can structure the the governance bureaucracy the delegates are really the main thing that we can use to kind of be the counterbalance to the sort of the more um, the more sort of sp specific parts of the workforce right that actually do the work that actually are in the trenches on a day-to-day -day basis um right now they have quite a bit they're, they're quite empowered and, and they have a lot of resources and and they're achieving a lot of things but there's also this disconnect essentially between the MKI holders and and the, um, uh, the core units and particularly the budgets, for instance, right? And and one of the ways that, I mean, one thing is the whole voting situation with like voter apathy and of course like delegates being being away for voters to organize. But I also think a really important factor of this is this sort of the more personal um, element to it where you can really like the big difference between a bunch of voters and then a delegate with a whole with all of the voters um, delegating, uh, specifically a professional delegate, right? Like a even a professional full time, well paid delegate, is that they end up achieving the same type of sort of political and systemic clout that the facilitators and the co units have right now. And that's completely, that's, I mean, it's crucial to sort of have the bureaucracy actually work in practice in terms of sort of decision making and, um, uh, and, and maybe most importantly, negotiation and, uh, and that whole, the whole aspect of, of sort of resource allocation and political allocation of, of, uh, of, of yeah, of like the entire, with the way that, that, that things are done throughout the, 
the um, the bureaucracy. And my, my conclusion is actually like, so I think that the, like I think Long is really sort of has the right instinct in terms of, okay, like what the fuck, right? I mean, are we really, do you really think we can, we can sort of um, expect them to play this critical role in, in being sort of the, the, one of the really fundamental pieces that, that are supposed to counterbalance the entire bureaucracy's self-interest in, in some sense. And then we, you know, you know, and, but we're not, we're not gonna, like in terms of the value they create, we're not gonna actually compensate them at that level, right? And then long like, wisdom suggesting we, we, we pay them all. And, I, and basically I think that the, that's complete, I mean, that is, that is fundamental. And, but actually it's just what's being suggested right now. I don't think that's enough. In fact, it's still pretty far from it because I think basically what we have to aim for is something in like a type of delegate that looks something like a facilitator in terms of their political clout in the bureaucracy essentially. So that would also lead me towards, and, and in terms of their responsibility, in terms of their personal commitment and, and sort of, um, I like sort of their, let's call it the passion and, 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 and the ability to fight in the bureaucracy, right? Um, so I think it, it needs to be something similar where there is very attractive cash compensation, but there's also this like attractive MKR compensation on top of it. Um, and yeah, and then it's, it's it's very expensive and and that's a part of what i'm also going to talk about where there's just this sort of critical mass that the overall workforce needs to to reach before the things really start to pay off but um but basically i don't think there's really a, a realistic other way because the, the current situation just isn't sustainable where we we have some unhappy delegates we're we're not really right like we're not attracting delegates from outside, right? Like the delegates we have today are all people that have, you know, they're like the, the, the diehard believers in the project that have been with the project for a very long time, right? Like, and, and, and we need to actually get to a point where we have the ability to go out there and do the same thing that we're seeing others trying to do to us, right? We can poach delegates from other projects. We can hire professionals that have the skill sets that we're looking for in delegates. So we get this like really professional and, and high, um, highly qualified, um, you know, representatives that that play this crucial role as sort of the the intersection of of the community and then the workforce. So yeah, I think for now, I think this proposal is, uh, and 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 I, I really like the idea of moving ahead quickly with um, a trial. But I'm I'm going to push for something even more uh, comprehensive and uh, and even things like job security. I'm thinking of various ways that we can provide that as well. But I think that that we need to take like like all of the stuff that I'm I'm playing around with, it needs to be done um, you know, step by step. And as a result, it's it's I think it's very good to to move forward with um you know more sort of interim measures that just help kind of do something in the short run, signal that we're we're willing to act and uh, and, and sort of at least uh, deal with with part of the issue. Thanks for that, Rune. Does anybody else have a, have a perspective they want to share? Yeah, so my perspective is uh, like if, if we're going to have higher delegate compensation than what's been proposed, then we need to have a clear list of what you know, delegates are actually going to be responsible for and make sure that they're indeed uh, qualified to take that on because as it stands, like it's pretty easy to be a delegate compared to a facilitator. And if we're going to have comp that's on par, I would expect there to be the delegates to be full-time and actually adding value in ways that they are qualified for given their professional experience. Like today, you can just be a whale self-delegate to yourself or if you have relationships with a whale uh you know people don't really there's no clear way to see um the qualifications for your delegates today so you know last time this was discussed a couple posts on the forum like delegates were working like 10 to 15 hours a week like do we really want to pay them the same as a facilitator that's working you know at least 40 minimum i would say so 
to sort of, uh, I guess, counter that a little bit, my, my sort of point would be that it's difficult to, like delegates isn't really a position you can like hire for, in my opinion, right? Like it's a position that's kind of, uh, is elected by MKR holders directly, right? As they move their MKR around. So my hope is that like, once we start like sort of paying these rates, then the people who sort of, you know, are the sort of people you're describing, right? Who are sort of putting in sort of part-time and don't have sort of, you know, good qualifications will sort of be gradually replaced by the people that do, right? Because they're more attractive to mega holders as targets for like delegation, right? Because they have these skills and this sort of level of commitment. Um, so I think it's less important to sort of define or it's not sort of necessary to define like a strict list of requirements or a strict, um, you know, sort of schedule or expectation, right? Because make holders should manage that themselves, right? As as more delegates come on, like the higher quality ones should accrue more maker. Yeah, I agree with you, Lung. Um, my issue right now is that it's not clear. Uh, I think this was mentioned already, but it's not clear what a delegate should be doing. So it's very hard maybe even for MKR holders to decide what these delegates should be doing, right? Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention is that right now, I think that, and any delegate can jump in and, and correct me, but I think that there's a huge work that, that the delegates are doing that could be potentially be um, outsourced to a, to a core unit that depends directly uh, on, the, on the delegates, right? And this core unit would do uh, what in in the corporate world it's called uh, MEL, which is monitoring, um, evaluation, uh, evaluating and learning. So it's like an advisory core unit that could potentially talk to different core units, ask for reports, uh, ask what they're doing with the, the budgets, uh, what they're doing with initiatives and keeping them accountable. So that's something that I've been thinking on and SES has been thinking on uh, lately as to how to improve governance. So it's to add these uh, these workers that are a bit more more neutral and that they work directly for the delegates, so that they can work more on 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 steering the vision uh, according to the MKR holders and not so much into doing the quote unquote uh, dirty work of actually chasing the core units to make sure that the quality is there. I agree with Juan. I think um, the issue that I have with um, this proposal is just that the role of delegate seems really murky to me. Um, I've seen people say that they're, the role of the delegate is to interface with like external regulators. That's not something that I would expect of a delegate. And if it is part of their like responsibility, I think that should be documented and then there should be um, like KPIs and stuff for a role like that. Um, I definitely agree that um, the delegates should be paid. I'm all for people being paid for their work and their time. But my issue is that it's just that this role just isn't defined at all. And I think some of the components that people are talking about that a delegate would be responsible for could easily be a core unit. Like, for example, like a government outreach core unit, I think could be um, really beneficial. I think right now it's kind of just like a catch-all for um, the responsibilities that don't have anywhere else to go right now. Um, and so that's uh, my personal opinion. Yeah, I agree with... Sorry, you go ahead, Mark. Uh, I was just going to say that I agree with the points that Juan and Katie made. I feel like at this point, we need to take a step back and just truly assess, like, why did we implement delegates in the first place? Like, to pass votes or to have them actually act as executives, you know, going through every single MIP, every single signal request, and actually try and be some sort of, you know, advisor and neutral party. Um, and then, you know, fully uh, define like what should be within like a de delegate's responsibility. I think, you know, people often <clears throat> talk about like the work that paper's doing. And, you know, I think that's far and above in excess of what a delegate is defined to do. And that would be some sort of, you know, CU type role or hybrid type role, um, you know, possibly related to the DVC uh, you mentioned, Rune. So I don't know if you want to talk about that or any ideas you had uh, related to that. So um, I just wanted to address this. Uh, people are bringing up the question that we don't know what delegates are for. 
And uh, I agree that we, we don't really know, um, like uh, Paper Imperium has done things as a delegate that uh, were kind of unexpected. And, uh, and yeah, the um, lobbying government agencies perhaps could, could or should be a, a core unit. But the thing is, I, I think we have a chicken and egg problem here that we we don't we we know we need delegates just to to um, get votes passed in a timely fashion, but we don't know what other responsibilities delegates should have, and I I don't think we can know that until we um, you know we give delegates a chance to find out what their job is, and so we, you know we can we can look to other organizations. And uh, you know, imagine that they're kind of like um, a board of directors or kind of like an executive. Um, but our organization is unique, and we don't really know, um, you, you know, spontaneously what what delegates will uh, will find that they're able to do that we can't predict. And I, I just I would suggest that we need to um, allow that. To that exploration to have the, to happen, give them a chance to to um, kind of develop, uh, 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 you know, to, to kind of invent their job, and then you know we can document it later, turn parts of it into core units. Uh, but uh, we should allow that experiment to happen because we're you know we're really breaking new grounds here. That's kind of my position. I I want to heavily push against that. I definitely think you should segregate roles and some things should be core units and some things should be up to delegates. And uh, just letting this delegate thing, you know, kind of expand into a vacuum and kind of absorb a bunch of stuff. It's going to be really hard to splice that out later. And uh, I, I kind of have this fear that that's just going to turn into a mess. So I would rather do the exact kind of polar opposite and just clearly define what a delegate uh, what delegates do and what delegates do not do. Uh, so for example, regulatory outreach, I do not think a delegate should be doing that, uh, period. Not like that they can, or maybe some do and some don't. Like, I don't think any delegate should be doing that. That's not part of the role. I mean, you yeah. can't stop them doing stuff like this, right? Like, they're like, if make holders, holders are delegating to them um, and they're like happy with them doing these things, like there's nothing you can do, right? Like. You, you can sort of try and convince maker holders that it would be better in a core unit, which, yeah, you, you know, that's the sort of path to which I think Joshua was talking about, right, where you pull stuff out of the, the delegates, like, role, and then moving it to something more structured. Um, but, like, yeah, if you start sort of saying, like, okay, delegates can't do this, but we also don't have anyone else to do it right now, then, like, you know, they're just going to do it if they think it's important. Well, uh, this conversation started as a discussion about how to get more delegates um, and, you know, the, the simple solutions is like, you know, throw more money at them. But, um, you know, Paper Imperium did uh, put up a, a poll to request some funds for, among other things, like legal representation. Um, by, by being a recognized delegate, you're putting your name out there, you're not an anon, uh, and, and you do become the target. Uh, and we, we're in a gray area here. Like, it, it almost seems like we should be asking the delegates why they're not um, doing this and what we can do to, to make them feel comfortable in the role. Like, I, I think that without like s solid uh, legal protection guarantees from the DAO to delegates, uh, it, it might just be too risky for, for anybody at any number. I have to push back on that a little bit. I mean, Looking at like some of the bigger DAOs, like look at uh, Uniswap, they have delegates from all like the major top universities in the US, like including Harvard Law School. Like I just, and just taking a step back even further, like I just don't think it's pra practical for the government to go after every single DAO at once in the US. And, you know, we're a larger protocol, but we're not, you know, to the extent that Uniswap is. And even with that civil investigation going on, like they're still acting as delegates. So like how but much- They also have a pretty big war chest, right? Like uh, an individual delegate for, for the, the maker protocol may not have the personal resources to uh, fund a legal defense. Yeah, that's something that I think we can 
discuss. I guess I just wouldn't expect there to be as high legal risk as some people make out, uh, just given uh, you know the participation of a lot of other you know highly qualified institutions, be it VC funds, uh, you know, at, at uh, universities, et cetera. So, so where does this idea that delegates are somehow more exposed to legal risk than other members of the DAO kind of come from? Um, I'm, I'm kind of curious, is, is there anything that in kind of common law that, that would point to that? Yeah, I can speak to that. So the, the big fear is that uh, anybody in the U.S. that is looking to either file a, a claim against, let's say they, they think they are wronged by the DAO or I uh, think that some criminal activities uh, taking place uh, by the DAO, they're going to look at it and uh, those who are not charitable, there's the risk that they could uh, determine that or assert that uh, MakerDAO is a general partnership whereby everybody has liability for everybody else's actions. So that's, that's basically the crux of it is U.S. in the sure, U.S. The but, def- but does the that default. mean that delegates are any more exposed than say a facilitator or any member of a core unit? Well, it has to do with being identifiable. Odds odds are they would probably go after the VCs first just because that's where the money is, right? Yeah, I, really, I really don't think it's, it's, I mean, guys, we don't have the um, expertise to discuss something like this. I mean, and I, I think that what's kind of happening now is the conversation is going in this like very specific direction, which I think is, is that's actually, you know, per, like, that's exactly the kind of stuff I want to talk about about today, right? Because, like, it's really pointless to talk about legal risk. To, I mean, and, and this point was already sort of made, right? That, like, we're talking about these very specific things, but what what really the problem is, we don't know the big picture, right? We don't even know what we want out of the delegates. And the reality is, the reason why we don't really know what we want out of the delegates is because we don't really know what we want sort of out of anything right we're missing this like overall big picture um and that's exactly what i mean that's that's one of the things i've been you know the, the one of the main points i've made in this the whole clean money uh, proposal right that that these concepts of the ice age right which is this idea that you have a sort of defined environment where things don't really change and you have a you 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 sort of know the what i call the world map right so the the scope and the breadth of, of what's being done in the bureaucracy right um but it's just like the thing is that it these things need to be considered holistically right they need to be connected together and i mean and i think probably no role is more sort of um in that situation than the delegate in that it, it's just you it really, you really cannot define what the delegate is without defining sort of what the other pieces are and then how they're supposed to interact, right? Because they because that's basically what delegates are supposed to do. They're sort of supposed to interact with the rest of the governance process on behalf of MKI holders. And then the question is how are MKI holders supposed to treat the rest of the governance process? Um, and and that's really the, 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 the central thing, right? That we need to figure out sort of an overall theory of how we want all of this stuff to look. And basically, I think the kind of, I mean, I mean and then the discussion we're having now, I think is, is I, I mean, the kind of, of things that are being considered, a lot of this stuff is incredibly useful, right? It's incredibly important exercise to go through these things. Um, but it's also, it's also just kind of like a fun, like, oh, fun, like, um, it's like interesting observation that in a, it's hard in sort of a DAO, right? Like to, to, to maintain focus. And then it's easy to then sort of go down various rabbit holes, which, um, yeah, like it's hard to, to, that it's a hard challenge to overcome, right? Because we need a, a sort of decentralized approach to, to this. But at the same time, we need a sort of, you know, we need to actually get results. Like we need to come, we need to, we need to do something about delegates and do something about governance in general. Uh, Peyton, you have your hand up. Do you want to go? Yeah, uh, not sure exactly how to um, phrase this, perhaps, but uh, so I, I do think it is important that we we have some discussion about like what the the greater role and like what a delegate looks like in in traditional 
like companies, things we're familiar with, so we can compare, see what aspects we like and, and want to take with us, uh, that sort of thing, right? However, I think we're missing a bit of um, the kind of crutch of the proposal here by kind of like overlooking the, the minimums, if that makes sense, right? Because what we're saying with this, like in terms of what a delegate is and, and what they'd have to do to get paid under what we're kind of putting forward here is they basically have to acquire some amount of, of delegated MKR. Um, in theory, that could be coming from them, right? We don't necessarily know uh, if that's the case or not. Uh, they have to uh, basically do a call, post their platform, talk about like what what they stand for and, and what their guiding principles are as a delegate. And then they have to participate in votes and communicate uh, how they participated and, and why they participated. Um, so I think like, the bigger picture discussion is important and, and can certainly weigh in pretty heavily into what we're talking about with compensation. I think there's a part of the argument that's kind of being overlooked, which is like simply having these public figures who have a platform who are communicating with their votes, who are saying things like that, that is inherently provides some value to the DAO, right? It has some, some value to our governance system. Um, so even if you don't agree on all the things a delegate can or, or should be doing, um, I think we can kind of focus back on like, all right, well, how much is this um, actually providing to governance? How much is this worth it for us? Because uh, from, from the governance side, we, we do gain a lot from having recognized delegates um, in terms of consensus building and, and compromise and, and understanding why things don't, don't pass. So there is inherently some value there. And I think we could probably be a bit more productive if we talked about like how much value we saw there, or how much value there is in the DAO, rather than debating over what what a delegate can and, and should be doing. Just my I two just, cents there. Yeah, I think I'd maybe like to just follow up on that and just sort of emphasize that this is like like the requirements we've kind of set out are like the bare minimum thing that we would need delegates to do, right? Like all this other stuff we're talking about on top, like what should they do? Should they direct things? Should they do X or Y or Z, right? Like the bare minimum we need delegates to do is to like vote and communicate and like that's what we're kind of proposing to pay them for at this stage like once we have that then we can start you know layering on this other stuff right like what else do we need them to do but we can't i mean we can but it's difficult to sort of spin that up from nothing when we don't have any delegates or have very few delegates right um because we sort of don't have that input i guess from mkr holders right it's just or we have it but like it's not in a position where it can sort of vote and sort of communicate and actually take part in the discussion, I guess. So you guys are saying that you do have a list of responsibilities and expectations for a delegate. There are like, yeah, like Penn said, there are essentially four, I think four responsibilities, right? They need to show up, they need to write a platform, they need to uh, like host, well, we host the meeting and they need to show up and answer questions for like an hour or half an hour, I think it was. Um, they need to vote consistently and they need to communicate why they're voting consistently in order to get paid. Like, like that's it. Like it's not, a, it's not a big list, but like those are the requirements and they're paid depending on how much they're delegated as well. Right. So the, the way it's set up is it's increases, uh, logarithmically exponentially. Right. So you get paid more, you know, the first 10 maker you get is worth more than like the last 10 maker you get a delegated up to like 10,000 FKR, uh, which is where the maximum comes in. Right. Um, so it's not like we're instantly paying people like the full amount, but we're paying them like we kind of want to just be front loaded because it attracts people more right, and sort of covers for when they're just getting started. and They don't have a lot of MKR delegated, to them, which is why it's uh, exponential or, or the other way around. Why is it? Yeah, logarithmic. Um, there's some sort of there's some sort of cap on how many delegates that's got, that are going to get paid, right? Uh, we don't currently have that. No, I think that if we get to that situation, we can deal with it. But like right now, I'd be thrilled to have like 10, 20, 30, whatever, right? So it seems like from the conversation, the biggest issue that people have is that there isn't like a, a like a scope of work for a delegate, but it sounds like you guys actually do have one. So if we can like come to an understanding that that's the scope of work, nothing beyond that, um, then it makes a lot more sense to me. But there's been a lot of like operational type things that people have mentioned that would be like a delegate's responsibility. I think it's just really crucial to come up with like, like a very specific 
like role of what the delegate is and what they're responsible for. And if it's just that narrow scope of work, that's great. But um, that's been my like whole issue is that there's been a lot of other things like thrown out there that fall under the delegate umbrella that don't really make sense to me. So if it, if, um, yeah, I'd love to see just like documentation of like, this is what a delegate does and like very specific. And then I personally would be able to get behind it. And it sounds like others would be too, just based on this conversation. Uh, we can't hear you, Juan. Speak up. I think that was one. Is it better now? Uh, yeah, that's better. Good. OK, I was going to say, Katie, that the documentation or, or what Long mentioned, it's already there. So it's relatively simple. I think that we, we should focus on, uh, maybe this is a really bad idea. So if someone wants to weigh in, uh, but we should focus on all the, the other elements that Rune was mentioning that should be in place for this method to work and to make sure that everything's connecting uh, properly. So uh, I want to speak briefly and then maybe perhaps a little bit like to the point of sort of defining these strict criteria, right? Um, like the, the, if it, there's very little we can do to sort of prevent MKR holders from delegating to a delegates. So like any list of requirements we set out is, is sort of difficult to enforce, right? Like say you're like paying a delegate and then they stop fulfilling the requirements for whatever reason, like not a lot, but like they just don't meet something, right? Like, how, how do you then stop paying them, right? Because as long as big holders don't object too strenuously, they're going to keep delegating to them. Like, they're going to need to pass some votes to sort of to sort of cancel whatever payment stream is, is going on, right? Like, it, it's kind of very difficult to define strictly because it's not up to, like, the DAO, I guess, where the delegated maker goes. It's up to, like, individual maker holders. Um, that's my concern yeah. with sort of trying to define some very strict framework, right? But this and actually like this, what you're now getting at on, right? This is actually the fundamental, like the thing is like discussing sort of anything else is, you know, it, 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 it's missing the point in some, in some sense because of this, the fundamental and most central issue that we're facing, right? Which is that, you know, this, this thing of like, we can't define the rules for being a delegate. And, and why is it we can't define the rules for being a delegate? Is because we basically assume, and, and we have we've become so used to this environment where there is no connection between MKI holders voting and governance, right? There's like this, like we don't like. I mean, because in theory, it should be MKI holders that are in charge, and then they have the votes, and they say this is what we're looking for in delegates, and then delegates show up, and then they get delegated to, right? If if um, you know, if if, it, if this disconnect wasn't, what, you know, didn't exist, right? And and that's I think what really I mean. The thing is that that no matter what we try to to do, basically, unless we get we we, we figure out a way to sort of bridge that gap, then uh, it's not going to work, right? I mean, because basically people just aren't delegating right now, and generally there is there is a sort of frustration of that disconnect that exists, even when you have things like delegation that work. All right, I'll, I'll yield to uh, Megaman. Yep, yeah, go ahead, Megaman. Oh, I was just listening. So my take on this, Long, you can jump in with me a little bit, uh, but I'm just gonna say that, so my understanding was the problem was that we weren't able to pass executives. And what I read from Long is he was saying that they were gonna have, GovAlpha was having to chase down VCs to vote, right? And so there was a real issue within governance that Maker kind of wasn't doing its job, right? And so delegation was kind of proposed as a solution to that. And so, you know, when you look at this from a problem goal perspective, right? And just frame it in that context, like how can we make incentives so that maker basically does its job in governance? And when I look at it from that context, I want to reward everybody in governance. I want to have like a 50% pass through of that reward. And then we just put a number on it. I was picking a number of like, 0.1% of the market cap, a thousand maker a year, right? Do it and die, do it maker, I don't care. You really wanna do it maker because what you wanna do is kind of punish the people who don't participate and reward the ones that do. And the whole point is, is that you want the maker that's participating to perform. So basically you kind of wanna align the reward and punishment incentives to make that happen, right? 
And the idea of doing it with delegates, it's kind of convoluted. We look at the results that we have right now, right? We have two delegates that themselves can pretty much pass any green light. You know what I'm saying? It's like maker or, you know, long, you know, the numbers on these things, it's like 3,000 to do this, 10,000 to do this, right? We got two guys basically with more than 10,000 that can pretty much drop whatever they want through the polls. They can't do executives, but together, two, maybe three could do an executive. I, I don't know. Um, you know, when I kind of look at the result, I don't think we're getting what we need. And when I think about being a delegate, man, to look at the system and interact in the forums and deal with CUs, you know, it's very daunting time-wise. And, and I can't think about how to do that in a way that just makes sense for me from a time perspective and, and actually achieving anything. And so it just becomes this whole messy proposition of like, what's the actual goal? What's the problem you know, that we're trying to solve? And what's the best way to do that that kind of aligns all the interests across the board? Because if it's just delegation is just about getting maker to vote, let's just work on that, right? And, and you can utilize delegates as like a voting performance engine, right? and figure out how to spread the maker around because this idea that one person has 30,000 maker, hey, you know, a VC has 30, 50, 80,000 maker, you know, that's the reality of the tokenomics. And the problem is, is that these people, these whales basically aren't performing in governance. And when you look at the way the tokenomics are spread, you know, it's like, what, 80% of the maker is in the top 100 wallets and then 15% is in the next 500. And then you've got, 5% in the last thousands. And so the idea here is you need to reach to these people. I have no clue how to reach to these people except to give them incentives to play in this governance game and to vest them and do something creative, right? And I wanna write something on this and do work on this, but hell, my time is so hammered. I got four things I wanna work on, you know, and am I gonna get anything for doing it? I think half the stuff I'm gonna present, the governance is just gonna shoot down because they're not gonna like it. You know? And so I have this really mixed bag issue of like, how do I do work effectively and sit in this place? And I'm talking to lawyers trying to figure out, do I, if I actually get a chunk of maker that I vote here, do I have legal liability? You know, I'm putting money and time into this in a way that I could just ask by not being a delegate and just work for some CUs and still get, and probably do get more done than I would ever do dealing with as a delegate. It's just... I don't know, the whole thing is very daunting to me in a lot of ways. And, and I don't have any good answers other than we should really look at the problem and rethink the goals. And we can use the tools that we have to come forward with something maybe that works better. But, but I, don't, I think that sounds bad to everybody. And, and so I'm, I'm working on my own version and maybe I'll get it out at some point. But, uh, but I think these are the real issues is that we can't really frame anything because we really don't know what the problem is and we don't have a, a good uh, approach towards how to measure the goal achievement and to uh, apply solutions to do that and see how it works. We've just tried one and it doesn't look like it had, it's improved performance, but we have the, still have the staggered maker ability and delegates really can't get, I don't see any way that I'm going to get a to a thousand maker. I don't know. I mean, who do I have to talk to? And there's no place where people who want a delegate can actually interact with the delegates themselves and go, hey, I want to, I'm chopping around, you know, maybe you can be my delegate. It's like, so all of this creates barriers and hazards and issues for everybody. And I don't know how we get out of them. So thank you guys. Uh, Seth, you have comments? Yeah, I, I agree with most of uh, what Michael Mann said. And I understand that let's uh, move aside the fact that uh, delegates are here mainly to pass executives. That was the initial problem. But when you are delegates and you are like just a supervisor or someone a bit remote from the organization, you have actually only one job. It's just to focus on one thing and repeat this thing over and over. Find the thing that is the most important and tell it. And it's easy when you are in the organization to go uh, down the rabbit hole to analyze all the budgets and everything. But I don't think that's the goal of the delegates because that's a full-time job and they wouldn't get nothing done. I mean, I work with Mark for uh, more than a week now on how to use finance to put more strategic value instead of makeup because we are spending a lot of cash. We don't know exactly why. 
or what are the results. And we don't have a strategy for make a DAO. So, well, you can go to the rabbit hole and see every line on the budget, but that's not changing, moving the needle. And what I learned as being a board member of many startups is you just have one thing to do, focus on one thing and repeat it again and again. Because if you do too much, you, not get, you don't get anything done. And so it's, that's why you should be remote as well, because if you are full time on a project, you will no longer see the world picture. Um, so maybe comment briefly on, on, I guess, some of the initial issues we had, right, that Maker Man mentioned. I'm saying those are important as well. Um, in terms of sort of Maker Man's points, you know, that we should sort of, sort of try and address the problem of bypassing executives, right, getting more APR voting and, and all this stuff, right? The, the kind of reason that when we have that problem, we turn to delegation is because that's the, like, lowest hanging fruit for fixing this problem, right? Um, in that, you know, yes, you know, like at some point we're definitely going to want to try and reach like the sort of, like the smaller, like 25% um, of maker holders, right? Or small amount of holders that are holding the bottom 25%. Um, but there's like that, you know, that's a lot of people in comparison to the, the sort of whales that have um, sort of a large amount, right? And can sort of benefit from, from delegation because because that's kind of what, so, you know, without really reading too much, right? Like the VCs all want delegation, right? Like that's the thing that they're all, Kind of want to get get out there because you know it allows them to sort of not need to vote every week right which they which they don't love doing um just because they're not kind of close enough to, to sort of i guess vote like in an informed way without spending a lot of time which they you know want to spend on other things um you know so that's kind of where we tend to delegation and that side of it should still work itself out right because the the vcs kind of want to delegate um the custody platforms are sort of setting up so they can delegate. But the problem now is on the other side in that like when they kind of get around to actually being able to delegate, there aren't gonna be any delegates to delegate to because you know it's it's not a great deal as, as Make was saying, right? Um so the kind <laughs> so we're sort of trying to work on this problem that a few people have mentioned, right? Of sort of bringing like make holders into this sort of conversation uh, in a way like through delegates. Um, but in order to do that in a sort of well as decentralized a way as possible, right? We need like more delegates than, than we have. Um, uh, like the easiest and quickest way of trying to get more delegates is, is by paying them, right? Like, I, I, you know, we can sort of try and figure out some sort of fancy technomics thing or like, you know, sort of spend time sort of working out exactly what we want to do, but like that's not gonna solve the problem in like the near term, which is that just that we need uh, people to vote, right? Um, and, and yeah, like, so Nick's made a comment about like sort of um, spending in the sidebar, right? Like we're talking, <laughs> so 144k die per year, right? Like we're talking about, say, say 10 delegates. That's like 1.44 million die, right? We're spending what, like 34 million on CUs right now. Like compared to like, like the cost benefit, like on on this is not like, it is like really weighted towards benefit, right? Like we we can gain so much if we have this, and it's not that expensive relative to everything else we're doing. Like I, I just sort of don't understand. <laughs> I guess, you know, why this is, I guess, even a discussion, right? Like, this is something that we need. It's nothing that's not expensive. It, yeah, I, it's kind of like an open showcase to this from where I'm sitting, right? Like, it's it's important that we have this. Uh, have you been in touch with any of the large VCs that said they wanted delegation, but have not yet been able to delegate? Is that yeah, because there aren't enough delegates? Or, because I would assume that most VCs will delegate like still delegate to themselves. Like, I don't... Uh, no, so so there's a couple of problems stopping the VCs delegating currently, right? Um, the main one is that the custody platforms need to integrate with the delegate contracts because the VCs will only interact with contracts through custody platforms because it gives them an extra layer of defense against like things breaking, right? Um, actually, Porter's here. Porter, you, you can answer this question. <laughs> hey, no worries. No, you're doing a great job. I've, I've enjoyed the conversation. So thanks, everyone. Um, yeah, the bottom line is there's some technical difficulties behind it that we are currently working with our uh, custodial platform to fix, which for us will be done in the next week or two. 
I can't speak to the other VCs, but what we're going to do is kind of publish to them what we did with the folks that we work with. Hopefully that'll enable a bit more delegation going forward. That said, we are actively in the process of uh, looking for delegates and delegating uh, so that we should be able to, uh, to, to do that within the next uh, week or two. And we'll have some announcements soon regarding that just for the group. Yeah, that's great to hear, Porter. And I'll definitely, you know, if we can get some sort of list together of, you know, other large holders or VCs, I'm not sure who you've been in contact with long, but understanding like where they are in the process and what the reasons actually are between them not having delegated, uh, I think would be pretty important. If it's just technical, yeah. you know, we could see that coming soon. If it's because of lack of delegates, it'd be good to understand that as well. Yeah, I mean, this is all stuff that we've sort of been in conversations with the VCs about for like the last months, right? Like at one point we were sort of messaging like them every every week to try and get them to vote, right? Like we're, like I, I feel like Gabel has a good understanding of what is causing us problems, um, which is kind of why we propose this because it solves them. But I'm not sort of in a position where I can just sort of say like, okay, this VC said this is the problem and they're gonna do this, right? Like that's, that's not really how it works, right? Um, like I can say that just, you don't speaking, have to say a specific yeah. BC, but even saying like X amount of MKR having you know technical issues that they expect to resolve within X weeks, or you know okay. Y so, amount of maker. I uh, just don't think there are enough delegates to delegate yet. Okay, the three largest VCs firms that I believe exist, though it's hard to talk about right? because there's more coming in and going out and stuff. Um, are all require the like all require this technical thing. Like there are a few smaller ones that have done it themselves and are willing to do it without cost to do platforms. Um, but generally speaking, that's not the case. Um, the worrying about like the available delegates is more like on my side, right? Because what, once those technical solutions are there, right? VCs are gonna wanna delegate it to someone um, in some form. Um, like I think, again, not, not something that I can confirm, right? But that VCs would rather sort of delegate to like recognize delegates, right? Um, and like sort of part of what we've been trying to do is convince uh, the firms that like it's in their best interest to spread their maker across delegates that they think are, are worthwhile right because a that increases the centralization b it should reduce risk for the vc firms because there's less uh, like risk of any one delegate going rogue and, and screwing things up right um but i think if it comes down to it and there aren't enough recognized delegates then they will just pursue shadow delegates right and try and hire delegates directly um which will solve the problem of us passing executives but won't but we'll have no lever to sort of um, to encourage those delegates to actually communicate uh, with the community, right? Or sort of interact beyond voting, which I think is important for like, you know, how much reasons, right? Transparency, accountability, and sort of, um, and just sort of like decentralizing like that control. Um, yeah. I think she paid from Yeah, go ahead, Rin. Yeah, could I could I um, go into doing my presentation now? Because the thing is that it actually it really provides a lot of sort of foundational um, uh, perspective that I think will really help people think about all of these different things. And, yeah. So uh, it's... given that we've now gone for one hour, I'm pretty sure once once I get started, you'll all want to. You know, there'll be a lot of stuff that the people want to talk about. So it's, it's better we don't do that when we're all like super tired and sort of exhausted. So yeah, when we can, we can make it the last call for people to, to comment on this if they have uh, further input. I just wanted to say thanks for the discussion, everyone. This has been great, appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, just one thing uh, I wanted to point out is like the, um, we've always had the, the difficulty that we don't know, like if a vote doesn't pass, we don't know why. And, uh, you know, there was a, this, um, you know, you can put a comment in, in an executive now, um, which is kind of cool, but uh, just being able to know why, why a vote doesn't pass, that, that could be worth a lot to, um, you know, help the organization steer in, in a better way. Just wanted to mention that point. Yeah, sorry, I really wanna, I mean, it's not, a that's not a small sort of extra little thing. That is like this central question of the entire project. This, like that issue you're, you're pointing at there, 
is like the fundamental factor that's going to decide whether maker will succeed or fail right like if there is not a, a, a connection between voting behavior and uh, and then sort of the actual you know sort of changes and 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 strategy and and, and a sort of a feedback loop between results and then decisions then uh, the entire sort of like the, the governance process doesn't actually work right because like it's just doing random things trying to see if randomly it gets passed or not so that is really it's such a fundamental thing right this sort of the communication around why do you vote and what's being voted for and why do you vote this way um yeah that is that is really yeah so yeah i want to echo that because you know the way the executive works is you just vote yes for a particular executive the idea that someone is voting yes on an old executive, you get no new information from them. There is no no vote for them, right? And so there's that part of the process with the executive immediately leaves out information because you don't know, did the person who voted yes for that old executive, are they just not participating or are they actually a no to the current executive, right? Polling's a little different. But uh, that's kind of one of the key issues is we're trying to get information and the way the mechanism is set up, we can't get information on no's to people on executives, right? And so that's kind of a key issue is how do we get the feedback when the mechanics of the system are such that it's not designed to be able to give us that feedback, particularly on the executives. So um, I wanna do a little uh, experiment I think so we we just had this conversation right about delegation right and we had what maybe like 10 people or something um chime in maybe more than that but i want to see like how many of the people that just came with inputs on the call actually spoke how many are just regular care holders that are not in some way sort of what are a part of what i call the workforce right so not like paid in some shape or form through core units or delegates themselves right that even though they're not getting paid right now there's it's it's about the expectation of payment right or just in some other shape or form people that have some kind of let's call it special relationship with the protocol rather than just being a regular MKR holder um, and so I've, uh, there's obviously um, there's A16C right this porter and then there's uh, IAMIO I think right you're not you're, you're just an MKR holder still or... yeah he is that's what's my way and uh, I guess possibly KD also counts. So yeah, I was thinking KD as well. Yeah, I'm and if, just an MKR holder right now. Yeah, so I think that's basically it, right? And, that, and I think actually that's this sort of, I mean, that's the same kind of thing. That's the same, we, we're seeing that sort of this, the disconnect in the same way, essentially, right? That, that, um, is like we just discussed delegation, but it, like sort of the entire framing of the discussion is not even like the, the, the starting point isn't even like we, we need to sort of consider that as well, right? Because the thing is someone who, I mean, from the perspective of core units, the role of a delegate is to pass executive votes, right? Like to sort of like, um, you know, pass the executive votes that the core units wanted to pass essentially, right? Or like. I mean, and I even, that's even how it was discussed to some extent, right? That, oh yeah, they're, they're there to sort of rubber stamp the votes. I mean, now I'm being a little uh, spicy here, right? Of course, that's, that's, that's not actually how people think about it, right? But my point is that- Yeah, it's, like none of the people think that, to be clear. Well, I mean, but the thing is, I mean, ultimately that's where the incentives leads us to, right? So, so we have to really think, and that's sort of the, the thing about, it, we have to think extremely carefully about the overall structure of governance and especially sort of what are people's incentives, right? What are actually, you know, who's participating for what reason, right? I mean, a delegate that participates in discussion about delegate compensation, their objective is to, I mean, maximize their compensation, right? If you're looking at, at if you're looking at what their incentive is. Um, and this is kind of, this is, a, I mean, this is the fundamental, literally the fundamental thing, right? Because the question is ultimately all of this stuff, right? What what is it all about, right? It's all about creating value for MKR holders and and growing the, the maker protocol and achieving its objectives and you know like um, creating value for end users. And and we have to sort of recognize 
what are the pieces that sort of you know what are the pieces that sort of actually like achieve that outcome and sort of do the work and actually uh, create the value essentially and then who define what the value is right because that's that's um that's sort of the great contradiction when we have this like lack of of um feedback loop between mkr holders actually voting and and proposals actually passing and then the conversation around what's being put up for vote and what do we even want what are even our objectives so um yeah with that i'd like to uh, get into um sharing my slides here and then going through it and because basically this is like this fundamental like this is a sort of fundamental um question um is what i want to you know what i'll really be focusing on over the next couple well i mean not just over the next couple of weeks i mean i think this is i mean it's sort of what's already happening right but but this the overall thing is is the, the governance earthquake essentially right this like period of, of very uh sort of constant change and constant evolution of how governance works and the question of like how do we get to a stable equilibrium where things actually just run and everybody's happy with how the, the process works right everyone's doing their thing and everyone's uh, satisfied with the overall picture maybe before we dive into that we can just get a sort of quick uh, lights of uh, time check really like how long do you think this is like this presentation is going to take because uh, it is as you said it is late for for people um, so i kind of want to make sure people are prepared before they sort of dive in so Sort of yeah, I think like uh, yeah, of, of meeting. I think I can do it in twenty minutes unless people want to uh, discuss things on the way. The thing is, it's it's we're, I'm getting I'm getting into really the the spiciest stuff of all of, of, of mayor governance, right? Like the the real big questions that some of you maybe not have considered those as the real big questions. Others consider them as sort of the elephant in the room, right? That you might even be afraid to discuss in a sense, right? So um, I think I mean I think we could we could basically yeah there's a good chance it'll spiral out of control and, and rabbit hole like crazy so people should uh, keep that in mind and so, basically I'm willing to like discuss this uh, all evening right um, so my question then is do you want to separate this from the governance call and we can sort of end this recording and potentially start another one which is which is that because I kind of don't want to um, yeah yeah like sort of force yeah. it okay yeah, so maybe we'll. Okay, so maybe we'll call this here and then, um, I mean, I guess we can just spin up a, another recording and then record it separately. Okay, so yeah, uh, thank you everyone who uh, who showed up for this call. Um, I know we're all on the ground because of Lisbon, um, but yeah, very much appreciate everyone showing up. Uh, if you stick around in a moment, we'll get into rune stuff, um, but we'll pause the recording here. And yeah, that's into another meeting. Thanks everyone for joining. All right, thank you guys.